Welcome everyone, my name's Dom, and this is a video that, well, I don't know if you know this, but I had a YouTube channel a long time ago, it's called uh, iTech Dom, you could actually visit here, not that there's much on there, but I did this video, I don't know exactly how I'm gonna have it framed, but, uh, so this was uh, one of the more popular videos on the channel, it's about, uh, you don't need a new smartphone right now, and more or less, it was, uh, I released back in 2017, and it was about, uh, well, <laughs> there's not been a lot of smartphone innovation, right? It's actually the video that kind of inspired me to make the Completing the Circuit channel. And so I wanted to do a continuation of that video. Three years later, do I still feel the same? Do you still not need a new smartphone right now? Well, let's find out. Smartphones. Uh, where are we at? We're in 2020, right? And we have uh, we have iPhones. We have Androids. We have folding phones. We have uh, I think there's like pullout phones. There's cameras that are in the screen, behind the screen, flip over the screen. We have a huge selection of phones. Can I honestly say that we are right now where we were back then when I first made that video? No, absolutely not. I think we're finally starting to see an uptick in innovation. But I, I'm still having a problem. And I, I mostly addressed it in that video, uh, but the, it's this this focus on cameras, right? All the cam, all the phones seem to have this this huge fixation on cameras. And again, what I find is that we we have been at a stage where cameras they're, they're good enough, right? I get it. You only have that one moment to capture that one picture, and you, you, it's it's really hard to make any better, but. This fixation on cameras, I don't think it has to do so much with moments. I think it has to do with social media. And I think it has to do with the idea that, you know, you, when you take your pictures, you upload them on social media. Here's the problem. The, 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 the pictures get, the pictures and the videos get converted. So when they get converted, the, the, the quality is dropped. The, the, the resolution's changed. So many things, I got hairs in my eyebrow going on here. What's going on? So many things about the original image are gone anyway. So I don't understand this fixation on cameras. Like I said in that video, you would be, um, you know what, just go ahead and watch the video so I can stop referencing it, right? Uh, here's, the, here's, here's a link right here. Uh, but the biggest point that I remember bringing up in that video is if you just wipe your lens off before you take a picture, right? You're, you're touching it with your hands or it's in your purse, it's got makeup on it, it's got, you know, oils and from your hands and everything like that. If you wipe off your lens before you take a picture, you'd be amazed at how good your camera is, how good your camera has been from previous pictures. If, if, if you can try to find yourself some pictures that you took from when you upgraded your phone, um, like immediately after you got that phone, hopefully the lens was relatively clean, maybe not scratched, anything like that. Surely you will start to notice that, you know, at, after a certain point that the pictures seem to degrade. I don't think that has anything to do with like obsolescence of the, of the phone. No, I think that has to do with the way the phone has been treated. Has it been in a case? Has it scratched? Has it smudged? You know, all that stuff is 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 fine and dandy. Um, but like, I want to see, and I think we're finally starting to get that. I think between the folding phones and the, the Apple car key, I think we're finally starting to get to a point where phones are going back um, to an era where there, there's, a, there's a bit of that wow factor and we're really starting to, you know, enhance the technology. I, I wanted to make this video today because I saw an article somewhere I, I can't even remember i can't remember where it was but you know hopefully i will find it and i will put it up here so in this article it basically talks about uh that they're making a phone that changes color that's again something i talked about in that video that's that is cool futuristic stuff that's the stuff i want to see that's the stuff that we need this fixation on the phones and and the cameras i mean we're getting to a point where you know it's all just software now and you know, this seems like it's basically kind of a complete rant, right? If uh, that's a new channel, by the way, it's all about tech rants. Um, so you could check that out here. I'm doing a lot of plugs. You know what? No more plugs. So even though it sounds like I'm doing a rant, really what I'm doing is I want to get down to the core issue. Why do these phones keep coming out with a bigger and bigger focus on cameras? And you know, I really just think it stems down to, even though I'm not the only one who's mentioned this, I'm not the only one that's complaining about this. I'm not the only one who thinks you know, where are those really wow, incredible things? The, you know, the, the last keynote for the iPhone, uh, iPhone 11 from last year, they focus so much more on the camera than they ever did. And every single year, it just seems to go up and up and up. And the incredible part is when you're dealing with cameras, like the one that's recording this right now, there's these little digital sensors and I don't want to get all the, the, the super technical stuff, 
But the phone, the, the sensors in the phone are small. There's only so much they can do. So now it's all software processing. And I, I don't know about you, but to me, when I when I look at between film, digital DSLR, and and like a raw image captured right off the camera, and then what I get from a phone, there is a crispness, a realness to the actual camera that I used to get, that I used to feel like I would get from uh, from pictures of, of way back when, before everything became this super ultra software enhanced, skin smoothing, artificial, you know, in, in my opinion, a picture should be taken to represent the moment. The video should be taken to represent the moment exactly the way it was. And then if you wanna ultra saturate it and make it pretty for, 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 for social media, you can do it then. But going backwards because the phone did that work for you, you know what, that's that's not so easy to do. And at the end of the day, you wanna capture the moment as it was, not as what, what Samsung or what Apple thinks it should look like. And I find this 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 draw to every year, it's it, it, like, is it the eye camera now? You know, is it the, is it the, it's called the Galaxy Note, but the pen isn't even the focus anymore. It's the camera and everything, these big camera bumps and everything like that just make phones and stuff that are a little bit more inconvenient to use. No, I want to see the phones that, that change size, like we're seeing with the foldable phones. I want to see the phone I could stretch and turn and I can, I can morph and wrap around. I want to see the phone that is like the only thing I need to grab when I leave the door. And I think we're getting there. I, I really do think we're getting there. I think between uh, cameras going under the screen, so there's more there's more content for the screen. I think that's really cool technology. The in the in screen fingerprint reader reader excuse me I can't talk today. The in screen fingerprint reader I think is a wonderful thing. I have uh, I have that on the, on my Galaxy Note 10. Yeah, those are those are really cool things, and I know there's more out there, and the technology isn't there yet. The, the, between the between the processors and the 12 gigs of RAM in the in the Note 10, which is a crazy number to think, right? Like 12 gigs of RAM in a phone is absolutely insane what does it need all that memory for though is, is 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 my question i think the iphones have like three gigs of ram and, and this isn't to say like android versus I, iphone but it's like all that memory my my mac my, my macbook has 16 gigs of ram in it and they're soldered on so i can't change it right the whole the whole that's 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 the bit when you <laughs> when you go apple but this the, my note 10 has in essence the same almost it has 75 percent of the ram that's in there what is it doing though like okay do picture and picture and you know what maybe maybe we've just hit plateau peak smartphone right maybe we've just gotten to that moment like what can we go beyond but you know what there's still new stuff coming out with tvs there's still new stuff coming out with game consoles and you know what i think that when it comes to phones I think there's so much more. There's like another echelon. We need to discover that next bit of technology to really get there. I'm still waiting for my month long battery that takes, you know, uh, let's say 30 minutes to charge. That would be like, that'd be my metric, right? Where is, th that's, that I think is the number one thing. When you go to look up what people want in a smartphone, the battery life and the durability. I think, I, I think iPhones, I think phones in general, their durability has gone up. Still waiting to see like that bulletproof glass that you could drop and slam and it's never gonna break and it feels crisp and it feels luxury like like glass phones tend to feel. Those are just kind of like passive abilities. I wanna see more things that I choose to engage with, more things that I choose to do. Uh, I would I would love to have a phone that, um, for example, I could, let's say, just if you know, if you're gonna ask me, Dom, you're gonna go ahead and make all these complaints, right? So, you know, what what, what are your freaking ideas? Well, uh, I mean, a long time ago, like I said, I'd mentioned I want I want cars. I want, wow, I can't talk today. I want a phone that can change color, right? I want to be able to just whatever electrostatic, magnetic, you know, metal it needs to be made out of. I can go into the phone, pick a setting, and then it changes it, and it stays that way, even if the phone's off, right? So you have people that can, you know, make their make their phones match their outfit, and um, now they're doing the the car key thing. I think that's a wonderful, incredible idea, and the way Apple implemented it is really cool. And I get it probably took a while because there's a bunch of security and what have you right but i don't want to get into the details of all about about those specifics what i want to see now as far as the future goes i want to see phones yeah i want to see the phone i get it the folding thing is cool 
But the folding thing comes with the crease. It comes with a very sensitive and delicate hinge. You get stuff in there. The screen cracks. This is something that, that Samsung is having a big issue with, with their fold. And I think that Microsoft's new uh, Duo, the Surface Duo, whatever it's called, I think that's a cool phone too, but that's like a weird mini laptop tablet. And you know, the, the screen itself has the has a slice in the middle, which is cool. You, get, you effectively just get a dual monitor setup. Now I want to see a screen that I can make into whatever shape I want. If I want to give it a slight bend so it can fit in my pocket better, I want to see a phone and, and something that you have to engage, right? I don't know. I just want to see a phone where I could make it. So let's say it's just a slate phone, right? And let's say I can go in and I push a button and then it's like free. Now I can warp it and I can bend the whole phone whatever orientation I want. Just something slow, right? There was a, a long time ago, I think LG made that phone. It was, a, it was a curved display and it would curve down from your ear, it would curve all the way down from your ear, right down to, right down to your jaw. And then uh, Samsung, I think, made one where it curved the other way. It was, uh, it, it was uh, instead of uh, along the, the Y axis, it was along the X axis. Again, cool stuff. But now let me do that free form. Then I can choose to fold the phone, open the phone, make the phone go backwards. Like, give me all this folding stuff. But give me it in any, give me it in two axes, and give me it any time I want, at any position of the phone I want. You might be thinking, well, how the hell do you do that? You need flexible circuit boards. Ah, now we need flexible circuit boards. Well, how do you do that? You need flexible batteries. Ah, now we're talking about something. And sure, there might be some components like, let's say, I, I mean, the camera lens, funny enough, or the big old camera bump that might not be able to, to flex, right? Because light won't be able to go in to the lens correctly, if if that was the case. But I think that I think the general consensus that I have when it comes to phones and where they were when I first made that video and where they are now is, I think we're getting to a point where we have to either acknowledge that we're at peak smartphones and all smartphones are gonna be good for is just social media, keeping in touch with people and you know handling some stuff if we're in the case of an emergency and you know being able to, you know, just the stuff that, that, that phones have been able to do now for, for quite a while. Like, do we have to, do we accept that we are at peak smartphone or do we really look at that sci-fi future? I mean, now you got, you got Elon Musk sending people to space and doing things with your brain. The future is still coming. And I think there's another level, another tier, another, ah, oh, like the, just, I just want to see, I just want to see it level up. I just want to see it go higher. I want to see us really, really, really go there. You know, I'll, I'll spend the money, take my money. I, I really just want to get that feeling I had like when I first picked up a PSP or my first smartphone, and I remember now I would just be up, you know, until wee hours in the morning just messing with it because I was in awe. I just could not. Now I get a smartphone and you know, it's it's just like last year's. There's no wow factor. There's no there's no wonder. Okay, I'll mess around with some of the with some of the gimmicks and that's it. The stupid animoji thing from iOS is cool. Okay, I could become a dinosaur. Yeah, that's fine. That's fun. But like that's not a day-to-day -day use that's a gimmick and i get that you need gimmicks to find out what works but come on how many people yeah you can use animoji every once in a while to have fun but you can't just fill a phone up with a bunch of gimmicks and say well here's a bunch of little stuff that will come up on different occasions for you to enjoy that's good that's fine but that just feels like clutter that doesn't feel clean that doesn't feel complete <laughs> i got my puns back and so yeah guys i would say three years later since making that video, I, um, besides, you know, losing a bunch of weight, oh my goodness, uh, you know, that, that's where my standpoint is now. That's where my thought is now when it comes to phones and, and the world of phones that we live in. I, um, I think we're getting there. I think, I think there's something to believe in again, but I think it's going to take an extra push. And I think what we need to stop doing is just buying phones to have either the latest and greatest um, or to have a better camera. I think if we do a little bit of work to learn more about our phones, to learn how to take care of them better, to learn how to make them last longer, to do things, wiping off your lens, knowing how to properly discharge your battery, getting a case, taking better care of it. I mean, your phone is a thing that you probably have on you more than anything else you own. You know, you have your phone around you more than you're in your car, than you're in your house. Like your phone is with you. It is, it is an extension of you. It is like technological evolution. The next stage of, of, of humankind where we can, you know, perform te basically telekinesis in a moment's notice to anyone else on the face of the earth. We can communicate with them. And, and this is a wonderful, incredible thing. But like if, if, if we as human beings have hit kind of peak evolution and now like our phones, this extension of that has, you know, where else is it going to go? Where's the growth? 
And I think we gotta completely break focus from buying phones just because of a camera or just because the latest and greatest. No, I think we need to buy phones with the wow factor. I think we need to get those folding phones. I think we need to get those innovative phones. I think we need to stop buying iPhones. I, oh my God, I think I just committed a cardinal sin. We need to stop. If this year's iPhone, the iPhone 12, doesn't have ProMotion in it, something that Apple came up with a long time ago. It doesn't have the in-screen in uh, a touch ID. I don't care about the notch. Everyone complaining about the notch. I'm so tired of people complaining about the notch. The notch is fine. I've never found it to be intrusive. I don't know anyone else that I've ever found it to be intrusive. I can see if like you are traveling a lot and you are constantly watching movies on your phone how maybe the notch could become a problem but punch holes notches i don't care leave them the same size give me the things that you already freaking make apple and don't tell me that you can't make touch id in a screen because samsung's in-screen fingerprint reader is wonderful it's not like the fastest thing in the world but i do miss touch id face id is great but come on those two things the iphone 12 needs to have the lidar thing okay that's cool that's fine but that's more focus on the cameras. I'm tired of the cameras. Give me, just, just, you gotta give it to me this year, Apple. Otherwise, I, you know, I, I'm, I, I don't know what else to say. I, it's just gonna feel everything stale and stagnant. And well, anyway, guys, I mean, that, that about does it for this one. I know this one kind of, kind of, kind of bounced around a little bit. It, it sounded a little bit more like a rant than, uh, than, uh, you know, an actual video, but I thought it was important to put it on this, completing the circuit, the main channel, because it, I want it to grow unlike phones, <laughs> oh my God, unlike phones uh, from my previous channel. And so I wanted to really, you know, inter, I don't know where I'm at in the camera, camera with my hands. I wanted to interconnect those two things. I wanted to show this is where I was and this is where I am now. And so I hope you like this one, guys. Uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up if you agree with me. Throw your comments down below. Uh, for those of you who knew me on the last channel, um, you know, I know it's been a long time since I made that video, uh, but I'm, I'm glad you're watching this one. So please be sure to leave a comment down below. Uh, you know, tell me your thoughts. Tell me your feelings. Tell me, like, is it worth keeping your phone? Is, should we upgrade every year? Is there something that I'm not understanding? There's something I'm missing, you know? And and definitely be sure to subscribe so we can keep talking about this and, and, and we can keep bringing this up and, you know, and definitely check out some of the other content that I mentioned before. And well, as always, guys, have a good one.